so in order to test out the sodium attack we need to find we need to find the right opponent i'm thinking we can get away with it against an 1800 let's try it What's up, Premier Chess? The sodium attack theory requires the uh, the tucking into C2. And we could transpose to something a little bit more normal, but you know what? We we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it fresh and salty. You wish you had the beard. Some people are not meant to look like lions, straw hat. Knight H3. Ah yes, the proper the proper sodium theory. And it would have been like this. This would have been so uh, symmetrical. But I feel like the sodium attack requires a little bit of asymmetry. I don't know. We're still in the early days of the sodium theory. How's it going, Daniel? Ah, knight a3, c3, knight c2, f3, knight h3, knight f2. Problem is, what if they go after f3, they play like d6? The sodium attack is not meant for the fate of heart. The faint of heart, I should say. We'll get we'll we'll get the sodium attack theory correct. Okay. So now that we have the knight on e2 instead of f2, we do have this option. Look at that. Tucking in the knight on f5. This is like really good for white. Black has no quick breaks and actually I'm kind of tempted to let him take it <clears throat> yes that is exactly why it's called the sodium attack you are so observant chess alt looking very tasty I would say the sodium attack so far has is a raging success. I don't know about you guys. What's up, Klausen? We're experimenting with some cutting edge opening theory right now. Okay, I'm gonna play rook f2. Swing this guy here, swing this guy here. They feel the need to play super passive against the sodium. Why do you think that's the case? Okay, so what what's the ideal scenario here? We haven't really used our sodium knight too much. Our sodium knight is quite lacking. I think we are going to have to do something like queen here, rook here, rook here. That's a five head name. Thank you. Yeah, we're uh we're going in. We're going in. Oh shit. Does he have this? He's gonna get rid of the knife on f5. Okay, but I see a little. The sodium knight will come into play. Don't you worry, the sodium knight is not gonna get left out of the, the fun.
Sodium Knight is coming to the rescue. Okay, well, I have this. This, this. That would be the proper way to play, right? And then we'll get the Sodium Knight in. No need to rush. No need to rush this. Knight on h7 so strong. <clears throat> the Sodium Knight will be coming in. Don't you worry. We are going to give him extra time just to make sure it comes in. Get this guy here. And then the masterful <laughs> re-coordination. The only piece missing is this bishop. Rook to d7, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm threatening to take here. Yeah, this is just too much. This is... If bishop g7, we have rook h7. King g8, rook h8, mate. This is too good, guys. This sodium attack is real. Yeah, and it, it, it really it really speaks to the utility of knight a3, knight c2. Like, how else is the knight going to get to g4? How else is the knight going to get to g4? Now, we got to be precise here, but knight takes f6 just looks... It looks too good. A well-seasoned sodium attack, indeed. <laughs> okay. And he's giving up now. His doctor said to use less salt in his diet, but he did not listen. Mr. Duck3333. He did not listen to his doctor. And I believe we're going to see a resignation soon. We'll take this way. And unfortunately, we had to give up the sodium night, but it was for a good cause. It was for a good cause. GG. Well done, Doc. Thank you for your contributions to the, the sodium attack theory.